Hello all, and welcome today. Today we're going to be talking about texturing a game map. Um, I'd like to thank Nothing Much Films for requesting this tutorial in the comments. Um, he also asked about making a vehicle or texturing a vehicle. Um, I've never done that before, so as a tutorial I can get to on a later day. But um, today, I just thought I would do a simple tutorial um, teaching you how just to texture a game map. And so, um, I have here in Blender, check it out. It's a really interesting scene going on. I'll explain a little bit about it, but um, I haven't shown you how I built this. It's really simple. Um, that's up for you guys to decide what you want to build. But in a way, it's sort of a shrine to uh, the monkey head, Susanna. Just look at it here in rendered view. Nothing too extraordinary or fancy, but definitely a lot to learn if you haven't um, textured anything before. And texturing is very important, probably the most important thing about game making. So I want to go ahead and explain this scene a little bit. First off, we're in the cycles render. I always like to textures in cycles um, because of also my previous tutorial, cycles baking. You can use cycles baking textures or baked textures in the game engine. Makes your game look a lot better. So um, we'll sort of go in here. We've got, um, if you go click tab, we've got uh, cylinders. We have six cylinders and a cube. Or sorry, seven cylinders. There's one right here as well. Um, that's it. This is all one object. We have a light. Um, this has emission on it uh, because it's what's used in cycles. So it's just a little light up here. And we have Suzanne by herself, no material. I just added a fuse material. Um, but it's very simple. So to texture, I, at least the best way I can explain it is we'll start with a plane here or a box even. I'll just add a random box into the scene or a cube, whatever you want to call it. And we'll go into UV image editor mode. And so to basically explain how um, UV unwrapping works, I would basically just show you. So to go into edit mode, you can click tab and you have all these faces. Um, now all these faces can correspond to an image over here. So I'll show you briefly. By click, double clicking A, uh, you can select all of them, click U and you can unwrap. Um, now there's a couple different UV mapping methods. Um, I find the best is Smart UV Project. Um, unwrapping is not exactly the same. I'm not sure what all of these do, but the one that's most popular is Smart UV Project. Um, we can have some island margin. This is basically the, the space between, how much space you want between each face. Um, and it's always good to have a little bit of that. So I'm gonna do 0.3, unless your object is um, basically stuck together. Um, so I'm just gonna do 0.3, it's a good number. And here we go. So. Actually, I'm going to do a little bit more to make it the island margin really obvious. We're going to do 0 0.5. That's a lot. So here you go. If we go over here, we can see that each little square or little face corresponds to somewhere that we've unwrapped. So up here, we have this part. Over here, we have this part. And so on and so on. So if you have to have an image here, um, basically whatever is over this whatever this is covering that's what right here is going to display so the texture if we have just an image texture straight over here whatever is going to be in this area is going to be projected on here so that's how texturing works is we have to basically put things in these little squares um, to make it look like a level so we can go ahead and delete this we won't need it um, and we'll go back to our level here now this is a big level. Now the best thing the best thing I can say or the easiest thing you want to do when texturing a level is you want to have mainly as much as you can um, the same object. Now I've made these two separate objects, this Suzanne and this um, entire level here because Suzanne is kind of annoying because um, she's definitely a weird mesh that can be projected in many ways. So it's kind of annoying how that works out so we're not going to use her and the same object. We're going to texture her separately, um, which just makes things easier. Um, one thing I can tell you, just a couple tips. Um, now this doesn't really quite matter because we have a very simple scene, but if you were to have a complex scene, go into edit mode. Basically any face that's not showing like we have up here, these tops, um, we don't need them because um, they won't be showed um, to the camera. So we can take the tops and bottoms. These won't actually be used, so we can just delete them. We won't need them. And this one as well. Um, basically, just to say is on vertices. This has um, less computing power your computer has to do. It just makes it easier when you're playing your game. 
Um, yeah, so we'll go back into object mode here. And, uh, oh wait, sorry, we're gonna um, go ahead and UV unwrap our scene. So, click all. I've already unwrapped it previously, but I'll show you again. We'll click U, smart UV project. And instead of 0.5, we're gonna do about 0.2. Um, that's pretty big. Uh, I just wanna short, sort of, sh no. That's a pretty big margin. But I'm just gonna do it to emphasize um, the island margin. So we'll click okay. And we'll look over here. I have a pretty decent um, UV unwrap. It's pretty good, not too bad, not too annoying. I'm actually gonna decrease um, the island margin. That was a little bit much. We'll do 0 0.06. Um, so we have a different kind of spacing here. We have some tops up here. We have this over here, this, this, this. We have all this around here. So what we're gonna do to actually save this layout we go into UVs, export UV layout, and you'll save this as an image. Just call it UV layout. I've already made one before. Do that. Once you've found a place to save out your UV layout, um, open your favorite image editing software. I'm going to use Photoshop. Um, and then all you do is simply find your UV layout you saved and drag it in. And here we go. So as we can see, these little lines um, correspond to our vertices and blender. So what we can do is add an image texture and just go over these. So for these columns, I want a marble texture. So what I'm gonna do is find a marble texture and bring it back to you. So we'll go into textures. It's very important to have all your textures um, in some way organized. This is sort of the best I have here. So once you find a texture you would like to use, my case I have this marble texture that I've found and we'll use it. We're going to zoom in here go about 90 zoomed in to see a little bit better. To show you how this works just place the file. I'm going to take this layer show you where that is. So we'll take this and spread it across here. Now in a realistic situation this is a very bad way to texture. This is um, a very low res um, picture right here um, covering a large span of um, vertices and a mesh. Um, this is not the preferred way to do it, but just for the sake of the tutorial, I'm just going to be doing a very simple texturing job. So just place it. And so what you would do is you would duplicate your texture. And you would go over here. And you would just place it over all the areas. Now one little trick I'll share with you. If you just have um, an image here, now this image I think is actually seamless, so it will go on forever and it looks all the same, but if you have a texture that's not like that, the easiest way to do it is to say cut it in half right here, place your file, duplicate it, and then reverse it. So it's the actual, it's actually the opposite of your other here. And um, if we take this layer away, sorry, so if we take this layer away, you'll see it's basically a complete mirror, but it all works. And then you can actually move it down this way, and it'll be a mirror. Move it the other way, it'll be a mirror. Um, it can be quite obvious sometimes, but if you have a large amount of objects, it sort of um, can't really be seen. And you can paint over that, and we'll go over that a little bit later when we get into the game. So I'm going to go ahead and leave you here, and I'm just going to do a really simple texturing job. I'm just going to add um, an image over here, an image of, on these places, and I'll be right back when I'm done with that. Okay, so we're back, and I'll have added simple concrete texture here to cover our planes. Now, one thing you want to make sure you do, take that away. You don't want that to be rendered out. So here we go. And I know this is a very boring scene. I just want to teach you how this actually works. Um, the creativity part is up to you. So I don't want to teach you um, my artist work because... You're your own artist, and this is up to you to make your game look how you want it to look. So, all right, let's say that. We'll go ahead and save. Um, now, there's a couple things you can do. Um, if you have a big game, you want to save this as a JPEG. JPEGs are smaller, um, but if you have transparency, um, you're going to need to save it as a PNG because that supports alpha. So you can do either way. PNG is a better quality image, um, not by much, but if you are... Um, really wanting to uh, let your um, blender game not chug as much space um, jpegs are nice so we're just going to use a jpeg and we're going to call this we'll call this level texture 
All right, and here's a little image, and we'll just click OK. Now, we're going to open Blender back up. Here we go. So with the image we just saved, we can open the image. And here we go, level texture. Open it. So when we look at it, what we have here is just as we made in Photoshop, we have all this area here. This area here is covered, and it works perfectly. So if we go back in here. Um, you'll see nothing has happened, and that's because we don't actually have the image texture applied to the mesh. So we'll click open. Go ahead and close this. You don't need to see it anymore. Um, in cycles, you just add an image texture, and you use the texture that we just made. Bring it in. So here we go. Go in here. I'm sure it's going to look horrible. Click a render. Um, uh, doesn't look incredibly horrible but it doesn't look good at all there's a couple things that I can tell are clearly messed up here um, so this is what we'll do we'll go ahead and get out of here um, and one thing especially when you have a cylinder or something that doesn't have many vertices um, you're gonna want to use smooth shading um, this can help a lot um, because as you can just see if we go back to flat you can see those lines smooth you don't see them anymore um, it does change a little bit of the shading but for the most part it does good now we can see that we have a little bit of a space in here. Now this is quite annoying. Actually, we're going to make this smooth, just make it look better. Um, and this is a very annoying part about texturing, is you can have this happen um, when you don't have a seamless texture wrapping around. So what you can do is we can go into Texture Paint. We have a couple options here. We have a Draw Brush, which allows you to draw on your image. We don't want that course you could draw graffiti on here but you don't want that so what we can also do is soften this is probably the easiest way to make your textures look seamless we're going in this little seam here and we're sort of making it disappear now you can also use soften or smear um, this can help a lot just to um, oh sorry uh, just to sort of even out your texture now one way we haven't saved our texture yet so if we actually look over so I pull this plane over here. Go back to UV Image Editor. Um, you can see right here how we have um, a little bit of blurry. I don't know if you can actually see that. Um, but that's where we've sort of painted over it. So what you're going to have to do is save the image. So I'm just going to go ahead and um, do some of the lines so it's not as noticeable. And I'll be right back. So once you've smoothed out all the vertices you've wanted to smooth out, I haven't done the entire thing, but I've done most of it to make it look pretty good, just the noticeable parts. You're going to want to resave your image over here or else it's not going to work and all that stuff's going to go away. So make sure you click Save Image or Save As Image. So we want to save it just as um, a different one just in case. We'll do Level, Texture, Clean. Um, call it whatever you want. Just save it and we can change it so that the uh, other one We'll open it as he's using the clean one now so we don't have to worry about that and what we can do is we we'll just give it a quick render and see what we have all right so for the most part we have a pretty good looking scene so far so and I can't stress this enough what we're gonna do next is give this um, a bake um, I've already made a tutorial on baking if you want to see that tutorial click on the screen right now somewhere the screen um, and that's a more in-depth way of um, doing it but I'm just gonna do it really quick um, and I'll show you all I have to do add an image name it what would you what you would like to name it we'll just call this bake I'll click OK open up our node editor um, go down here um, we'll just add we'll duplicate this select our bake whatever down here is gonna be baked um, and we'll just do a bake of, I believe, we'll do uh, 30 samples. Wow, that's a lot. I'm just kidding. You know what I mean? Uh, select this image and then just click bake. All right, so we're back. And we do have a problem. And this is a very good thing to point out. Um, as you can see, our um, image right here, all this is flat. Now, technically, this is all supposed to... Um, have shadows on it right because we have columns over it and I wanted to point this out because this happens to me a lot so make sure you do a test bake before you actually bake for the real thing and the reason this is not working is that since we made the cube 
the cube is actually using the light out here and instead of the other pictures inside. So the way to do this is uh, simply select the vertices that you want to flip and the normals need to flip so it's actually projecting the other side. Now these columns are fine so we don't need to actually mess with them. So just grab all of your corners here, all the faces, um, click space and you can search for flip normals. Flip the normals, go back to object mode and you can rebake. All right, so we're back, and as you can see, we've got um, an obvious, um, it's obvious to tell that it's finally worked now. So make sure after you bake, save as image, just call it bake, and um, we can go back into material mode, look in on it, I'll just join this together, and we'll um, give it the bake texture, open it. So here's what we got, um, and it doesn't look too bad. And... Uh, of course, realistic situation, you would be using more samples and it would look a lot better than this and there'd be much more time put into it. But this is what we have. And um, so I hope you enjoy this tutorial, just making a quick level. Um, if you would like to know how to take this from Cycles to Blender Game Engine, um, check out my other tutorial. Um, it's pretty short. So uh, thank you for watching. Uh, I would love for you guys to um, reply me or send me a message back, just hit me up. Um, thank you guys for um, all your support, and um, I will hopefully make a vehicle um, tutorial soon. So uh, thank you guys very much, and stay tuned. Bye.